G'day trendsetters, I'm John with Gravel Cyclist and I'm coming to you today with a pretty spanky bike review, namely the Kalfi Tetra Adventure Bike, handmade in beautiful California, USA. If you're a regular to the GravelCyclist.com website or Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel, you may already have seen my unboxing and features video about this bike. But if you have or haven't, keep watching for my insights and more about this lovely bike. Craig Calfi and his company, Calfi Design, has been making bicycles since 1989. Craig's bicycles have been seen under the likes of Greg Lamont, who rode them as a rebadged bike, Lamont, at prestigious events such as the Tour de France. Craig's business also has a flourishing carbon repair operation where they repair all manner of brands. So you could say that Calfi Design really does know their way around carbon fiber. This is the Calfi Tetra Adventure model, which is available in stock or custom geometry. This review sample is a stock 54 with a 55 centimeter top tube, although the head tube is a little bit longer than stock at 14 centimeters versus 13 centimeters. When combined with traditional headset cups, as you can see, this is a traditional headset and traditional head tube. There's no integrated cups. My position was a little bit higher than I ordinarily desire, but I managed to make the bike work just fine. As you can see, the bike looks quite attractive and it's set up with my usual 110 millimeter stem and set back seat post. And don't forget one thing, bike fitting is very personal, so what might work for me may not work for you. The frame is constructed from high modulus 42 and 55 MSI carbon tubes, molded in one layer to Calfi's unique and I think beautiful carbon fiber lugs. I just love the traditional look of this bike, it is so classy. Because this bike can be purchased either stock or custom, you can go berserk with options, even on a stock geometry bike. So other frame features, as you can see, it's a non-tapered fork and the fork is painted to match. It's a whiskey carbon. I think the paint job's pretty beautiful, really. Titanium dropouts, an English thread bottom bracket, and all of the cables are run externally, barring the rear hydraulic brake. <laughs> Pardon me, woodpecker, which exits the bike on the down tube just in front of the bottom bracket and then runs externally to the rear brake. In my opinion, this is one of the more attractive ways of running cables externally. It's very much like how we used to do old school, as they call it nowadays, road bikes. Very clean looking. And because we're in 2020, the brakes are flat mounted front and rear. This example isn't fitted with fender or rack mounts, but as I mentioned earlier, Calfi can customize everything about this bike. Tire clearance on this bike is a bit tight with a 700C by 42 millimeter WTB Resolute. There is some wiggle room, but don't forget, as I said, Calfi can customize anything, so you can obviously increase the tire clearance. And for the record, I ran the bike with some other wheels and also the current wheels on this bike, the NVG23 bird spoke wheel set with Panerais of Gravel King tires and 700C by 38 millimeter. Tons of room there. The drivetrain is an all Shimano GRX 2x mechanical affair, barring the crankset, which is the excellent Praxis Scienti carbon, and that crankset is fitted with 4832 chain rings. Calfi were very considerate. They shipped this bike with the wolf tooth road link. So that enabled this bike to run an 11 to 40 cassette. They did ship an 11 to 40 cassette with this bike, but because I wasn't riding any mega crazy mountains or super steep climbs, or well, there was one or two actually, for all of the review, I ran an 11 to 32 cassette. So effectively, I had a one to one lowest gear ratio. You can buy this bike as a frame and fork or customize it with any manner of drivetrain and wheels. The sky's the limit when you purchase a Calfi design bicycle. The cockpit parts are an all whiskey affair, so they complement the fork nicely. You've got a flared whiskey handlebar and a setback whiskey carbon fiber seat post. And I mentioned earlier a 110 millimeter stem, a substitute what came with the bike with an Eastern 110 millimeter stem. As for the saddle, I rode a Ridefar S-RZ or RZ if you prefer, and that saddle, I have linked a review of it in the description below. And finally, the paint, which I've already mentioned. I mean, look how beautiful this bike is. In my humble opinion, this is arguably the prettiest bike I've reviewed to date, which prompts me to say, why ride the same bike as everybody else when you can have something unique, such as this beautiful Calfi Tetra adventure bike? That's all of the features covered. How does the Calfi Tetra Adventure Bike ride?
weighing a little over 18 pounds or 8.2 kilos with Shimano XTR pedals, Kalfi bottle cages and the Bird Envy wheel set. The Kalfi Tetra adventure bike is very light but with zero compromises. This bike greatly resembles steel bikes of old with its relatively narrow carbon tubes. This bike is not a noodle, it is stiffer at counts but extremely comfortable. Calfee's beautiful and clever carbon lugs help stiffen the frame at the usual points a bike is expected to flex and I'm no powerhouse but there was no budging or squirming around the bottom bracket area. This frame is also very tough and resilient. I accidentally dropped the bike twice. Thanks, windy day. When I was taking this photograph at Ford World Headquarters in Dearborn, Michigan. A tiny bit of paint damage but zero frame damage. Barring my error, the frame has stood up well to my abuse in states such as Georgia, Michigan and Ohio. The geometry of this bike was a tiny bit larger than I would have preferred, but that's how it goes with review samples at times. However, I got the bike's fit quickly dialed in and riding nicely. Being a smidge more upright had no detrimental effect on how I rode, and this position is popular among most gravel cyclists. None of this implies the bike was slow, it is fast and stable on descents. In this scene above, close to Bainbridge, Ohio, I obliterated my knobby tyre speed record on pavement, cracking 51 miles an hour. No wobble, just confident and predictable handling. The same can be said for twisty or gnarly descending on gravel and mixed surfaces. As one of the lighter gravel bikes I have reviewed, this lack of heft was greatly appreciated when climbing. I set another record during my ride down in the Hocking Hills area of Ohio, where I scaled a gravel climb that maxed out at 26%. I was turning squares, my own fault, on a 32x32 32 32 low gear. The 40 tooth cassette Calfee sent along would have been helpful, but I was able to shift my weight, dangle the camera, and commit to forward motion without any worries. I preferred seated climbing, but the Calfee Tetra Adventure bike is lively out of the saddle in a good way. The carbon lug behind the bottom bracket forms a shelf that can collect mud, so I thought it best to run this bike through a mud fest during its first ride summer in Georgia. I had no clogging in the drivetrain, but there was a little mud scraping going on higher up the stays. I found the Tetra Adventure to be very comfortable in all riding positions, whether that be cruising with my hands atop the handlebars, cruising on the brake hoods, or riding in the drops. This bike would even make some of the steel retro grouches happy, because it resembles a steel bike, and in some ways, rides like a steel bike. But don't forget, tyre pressure makes the biggest difference overall to how a bike rides. These bikes start off priced at around $4,000. Overall, this bike is for the rider who wants a bike with options and the ability to customize, along with supporting the American economy because the bike is made in California. It also stands out from the crowd being so cool and so different. I've been a huge fan of Calfee bikes for many years. In fact, my first legit bike for these crazy adventure races back in 2011 was a Calfee disc brake cross bike that I took to crazy places in North Carolina and West Virginia you can do that too and more on this lovely Calfee Tetra adventure bike. So there you have it, my review of the beautiful Calfee Tetra adventure bike. I realize nowadays there's a ton of gravel bike options available on the market today, so I hope that my review went some way into helping you make an informed purchase decision. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the Gravel Cyclist YouTube channel, and don't forget to click the bell button to be notified of future videos as they appear on the channel. Tell your mates, tell your friends, tell your family. I'll see you in the next video.